It's been, thankfully, a while since I've had to do an update on the PC Junior Power Adapter stuff, but I have to make some changes. So let's go over what I've done. But first, a sneak peek at what the change is. The change I've had to make basically comes down to the switches. This is the switch type I've been shipping with the ATX to PC Junior kits, and it's been great because it mimics the original power supply in the PC Junior with this nice, pleasant to use red rocker switch. Now, when the kit was first introduced, this seemed like a no brainer to go with this switch. The switch cost was a little under $4 a piece, but I was able to sell them all pretty quickly, meaning I wasn't sitting on a bunch of stock. But that isn't the case anymore. Interest in these has gone down, so I'm only getting about one order every two months, meaning it's been annoying to have to keep buying these switches and then sit on them for so long. These have also climbed over $5 a piece, so if I order just 10 of these switches, I'm sitting on $50 of inventory. Now that $50 may not seem all that bad, but that one switch costs more than the rest of the kit entirely. So it really hurts when I have to make that order relative to everything else. And now I'm at the point where I'm really tired of having to play the game where I order 10 of these switches and then set up the kits and then have them run out and order more switches and set up the kits. And I'd really like to get a decent number of kits on hand. I still have 60 PCBs from my original order of 100, and I think it would be really nice to just have 60 kits at the ready. But I can't do that with these switches, because it would cost way too much. So starting today, this switch will no longer be included in the kit, but will be replaced with these. I'm replacing the one switch with two because I'm adding a reset button. Let me go over how that works and show you how you install this one. First, let me cover how the reset switch is implemented because it is thanks to one of the quirky features of the PC Junior, the cartridge ports. The cartridge ports are what have the reset functionality, so you're going to need to get to them inside the case so you can do anything. Now, this is actually a lot easier than you may think, even though they're underneath the floppy drive. After you remove the original power supply, you can unplug the floppy drive controller card and then just pull up on the back of the floppy drive. It will detach from the board and then you can lift it right out. Whatever faults you may think the PC Junior has, being difficult to work on is not one of them. Okay, so here we have the PC Junior cartridge ports. The cartridge ports were meant for you to be able to load software off a much more robust and easy to use medium than floppy disks, but due to the relative commercial failure of the PC Junior, there weren't that many made. Now along the lines of making this easier to use, IBM included a reset switch in the cartridge port. This was to allow you to plug in a cartridge while the computer was running, have the system restart, and immediately boot off of the cartridge, rather than need to fuss with commands or restarting the computer manually, which would require reaching around and turning the system off and on again. The way the reset switch works is by shorting these two pins when the cartridge is inserted. It is very simple in nature. And it's actually even simpler than it seems because this first pin here is just ground. So all you actually have to do is short this pin to ground to reset the PC Junior. All right, let's bring this back to how this works for the kit. Now I have quite a few new viewers since I last talked about my ATX to PC Junior adapter, but very briefly, uh, this is a board, this green board here that I designed that allows you to use any ATX power supply with a PC Junior rather than trying to find the really uncommon and expensive external 18 volt AC power adapter. Now I developed this kit myself on a video or two and sell these uh, on my website. So you can purchase this green board from me and use it to power your PC Junior. This bit on top here is a Pico PSU, and it's always really difficult to remove. There we go. This is just a miniaturized ATX power supply that runs off of a 12 volt barrel jack. So this is all you get from me, but if you want to track one of these down, which there are many affordable options of, then you can use a little tiny internal power supply for your PC Junior, and it comes out to less than it would cost you to buy one of the original power supplies. And I've heard claims that the original power supplies kind of suck anyway, so this might be the best option going forward. 
With that out of the way, let's get back to the reset switch. Now, I'm going to just leave out the ATX power for now because it gets in the way and talk about installing the new rear panel. Okay. The panel has two cables running off of it. The first one here is exactly the same as the old panel. This is just the power switch. So you want to plug that in to the ATX PC Junior adapter board and then plug that in behind the RAM card back here. If I remove this, you'll see it back there. Now, this panel, like usual, goes back here, slots into that little fork in the back and pushes down easy enough. This clip is what is really new and goes on to the second pin from the top on the cartridge port. And that's it. That's the kit installed. Now, what's going on back here is where this gets its functionality from. So let me get a closer shot of that. Now, like last time, the toggle switch, which is the blue one here, connects the ATX power supply's PS on pin to ground in order to turn on the power supply. What that means is one of these pins is going to be ground on the toggle switch. So the push button up here that connects with the cable off to the clip that goes onto the cartridge connector has ground as long as you connect to one of these two pins. So we only really need the one extra long cable going off into the case to use the reset switch. Now this can lead to one problem when you install this kit. If you're able to turn the computer on by pressing the reset switch, then you need to go over to the board, unplug the switch, and plug it in the other way. That will change which wires are the PS on signal and which one is ground to match the wiring on the switches. Rather than just guessing by flipping the connector around, you can also look on the PCB for which wire goes to the negative side of the connector and make sure that that's the one that the button is tapped off of. That will ensure that you're connected to ground. All right, just to make sure I've fully covered this, let me go over attaching the reset switch again. This is a spring-loaded wire hook that you're able to clip onto pins on ICs or other things. On this, you're going to need to make sure that this hook is attached to the second pin from the right when looking inside the PC Junior from the back. So the easiest way to do this is to put it in between the two pins and rotate it and then the hook will attach. You can then release and it will hold on. Then just go ahead and feed it down and stick it down by these chips down here and it should be good and out of the way for when you put the floppy drive back in. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to install these switches in the 3D printed rear panels. But before I do that, for those of you who order this kit as a DIY kit, uh, here is a clearer shot of the wiring here. Just again, one of the wires on the two coming from the ATX board will be ground, the other will be the PS on signal. This toggle switch just connects those when it's turned on. The button going to reset just connects ground to that other pin on there. So you'll want to make sure you have one wire going off to ground from this toggle switch and the other wire goes off to the test clip hook. This wiring will be documented with a little printout sheet included with the kit now. Up until now, I haven't actually had to give you a instruction sheet because it's just been plug and play for those that are assembled. But uh, this is now the first thing that's actually slightly complicated. So yeah, I will be doing that from now on. All right, like before, the kit will include two 3D printed rear panels. One of them has a hole in the bottom that you can use with a Pico PSU to install the barrel jack so you can access that from the exterior. And the other one has a slot at the top that allows you to drape the cable of an ATX power supply's motherboard connector into the case so you can use a standard ATX power supply instead. For the most part, Installing the switches into the panels is really simple and you can't get it wrong, except for one possible configuration. You cannot have the toggle switch at the top of the Pico PSU plate because it is too thick and will block the lid closing on the PC Junior. So this one, in this case, must go on the bottom and then the reset switch can go up at the top. All right, now I will cover installing these into the rear plates because you will need to do this for both the DIY and assembled kits because I don't know if you're going to be using an ATX power supply or a Pico PSU, so I can't cover everything. Now, I will have this fixed by the time these kits are being released, but this is a little bit tight on the reset switch, so I'm going to have to thread this one in here but the final kits, this will be loose. 
still really isn't that bad. Now we can put these both in. The wires coming off of the toggle switch need to be on the bottom to match the indicators on the back of the PC Junior case. Then two nuts are included. The reset switch has the thicker nut base or thread diameter and the toggle switch has the thinner one. So those will go on. You'll want to use a tool. This is also the first time a tool has been necessary for this kit. To get these installed and tightened, note that the reset button will like to rotate inside the panel, and that's not anything I can help. Um, it's just poor design on their part. The toggle switch is actually square and I've made sure that the tolerances are good enough here so that it will catch on the little wedge that sticks up and uh, that makes it not rotate but there we go that is the switches installed now putting these into the rear of the PC Junior is actually easier than before once you have the switches installed make sure the toggle switch is pointed down put the whole thing in at a little bit of an angle push down and rotate it and it will go through last time you had to leave the button off uh put that through put the plate on behind it feed the wire through and then put the screw in it's just, oh, really annoying oh i guess you needed a phillips screwdriver to put the last kit together so that's not a big deal but yeah there you go and you can see the slot for the atx power cable that goes right over to the adapter and then from here it's the simple thing where you clip the hook onto the pin and then plug the power cable in so that the negative side is on the minus point of the adapter board. It's still very simple to install. All right, that pretty much covers my part of the installation here. I've gone ahead and gone back to the Pico PSU variant since that's the one that I use. And let's take a look at reinstalling the floppy drive and everything. So this is still honestly really easy. Uh, go ahead and wrap this cable underneath there because it makes this whole thing a little easier. Feed the front of the floppy drive into the hole at the opening and then just put it down. Now you want to make sure that this cable is not blocking that hole or any of these cables actually because these two holes here and here are where these posts go in on the PC Junior floppy drive. So you want to make sure you feed those into there and then push down. That's it, floppy drives installed. Uh, it's best if you can wrap these cables underneath the fan. So let me go ahead and redo that on mine here. There we go. Then the floppy control card gets plugged into this slot. There is a fork in the back, just like with the PC Junior power kit here. And then go ahead, plug power into the Molex port and for the fan, and that's it. Power supply kit installed with reset switch. Like before, the panel still is held in place by the lid, so it will feel kind of floppy until you put the lid on, and then it's totally solid. All right, let's see the reset switch in action. Yeah. That's definitely a really nice compromise to not having the original power switch here anymore. I'm very happy with having the reset switch on there. I think that's just gonna make life a little bit easier. Now, if it seems odd for a reset switch to be such a desirable feature, uh, then you probably haven't used old computers like this that much. Old software misbehaves a lot. For me in particular, this game, every time I die in this game, the system freezes and I have to restart it. And control alt delete doesn't work, which is the software equivalent to the reset switch. But again, the system has to be actually working for that to happen. It's very possible for a software, especially written in low level languages, to leave the system in an unusable state that will prevent it from restarting naturally. Now, I would demonstrate this to you, but my PC Junior only has 128K of RAM and this needs 384, so that's not gonna be running on there anytime soon. 
Or is it? Because I was recently given a Tecmar Captain Jr. Now, at first I thought I wasn't going to be able to use this because my PC Jr. sucks, but turns out I do have 128K in here, and there's a really weird limitation for adding this where you need 128K, but that's a topic for another video, so we'll take a look at this then. Well, I think that might actually finally bring the saga of the ATX to PC Junior power supply adapter to a close. These switch types are so much more common that availability will never be an issue. Matter of fact, by the time that you see this video, I will have ordered enough of these to finish out the 60 PCBs that I still have. So, <laughs> man, all these things are just falling down. So availability should never be a problem again for these kits. Now, since I'm no longer ordering those expensive switches, I'm able to reduce the price of my kit. So the kit price is now $3 less than it was before. Uh, the new switches make this a little bit more complicated, so I wasn't able to drop it the full $4 difference for the price, but hey, I'm gonna take the small victory here. But it gets a little better than that because I've changed my shipping method from the USPS flat rate boxes to these little envelopes, and these, I think, will come out to be less than $4 to ship in the US. I haven't had an international order yet with one of these, so I'm not exactly sure what that's gonna cost, but that should help quite a bit for that cost as well. So the total kit cost is now down $6. So hopefully if uh, there was anyone holding out because of the kit price, which I still don't think was that expensive, um, but I just I always wanna make this stuff cheaper. So uh, if there was anyone holding out, you might wanna look again in a little bit. Um, I'm going to be fulfilling some orders I already have on these, but uh, these should be widely available again very soon. I'm just going to have to order some more of these switches, especially, um, well, actually, yeah, just more of these switches. I have about 20 uh, boards worth of switches here. One more thing before I end this video, since I started making my PC Junior power supply adapters, someone else has finished up one of their projects to make one as well. Theirs uses a power supply module that can convert mains voltages to 12 volts DC, which they're then able to regulate out to 5 and negative 12. This makes their power supply kit all inclusive, meaning that it can do everything with just a standard outlet power cable. This does make their cost a little bit higher, and I don't think they're selling this kit, but they do have it available as open source. I just figured I'd point it out while I'm here. Well, I think that's it for the ATX to PC Junior power supply adapter boards. There shouldn't ever be another change again. I'm really annoyed I had to make that change because I would have liked to have used those power switches forever, but the more I ordered of those switches, the higher the cost got. It's kind of frustrating because there is a black version of that switch that costs less, so they're kind of just screwing me on these switch prices. I might be the only one ordering them. I don't know. I've never seen the quantity change without me placing an order, so uh, whatever. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this update video, and if you want to support the channel, I am on Patreon, but for now, that's it. There will be more PC Junior content in the future, but I have a couple of other projects I need to get out of the way first, and I need to figure out how to use that Tecmar Captain Junior because it actually has an 8 volt AC power supply requirement, and I didn't get that with it. So, yay, more wacky PC Junior power supply stuff. I'll see you later.